Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. On Thursdays, we typically open older cards, and I found this box out at Gator JJ3 at the mall. It is a 1995 Series 2 jumbo box. I guess it's actually a cello box from 1995 tops. You get two Spectralite, aka Cyberstat cards in each pack. Also looking for League Leader cards, Finest cards. So it should be interesting to check this out. You can't really find these around too often. 1995 tops was the lowest production run in 30 years at the time. It was coming off of the 1994 player strike and also 1995. Strike didn't end until I think the end of April. In fact, they didn't play a full season in 1995. They missed about a month, and I think they played about, what was it, like 144 games that year? Something like that. At least they still got the playoffs in in 1995. Unlike 1994, when the playoffs World Series was canceled. Terrible time. One of the darkest moments, maybe, I guess it's the darkest moment in baseball history that I have been alive for. The 1994 player strike. So these packs were $1.99 back in 1995. You see Roberto Alomar and Moise Salou as the cover boys there. And then it looks like we have maybe Eric Karras stamped on there as well with, who's that? Maybe Will Clark with the Rangers. But we've got this one going to Tim. So Tim, best of luck to you. And they've got some odds there. Odds of finding a finest card, one in every 20 packs. So it's like a box hit. We'll be looking out for that. A league leader card, one in every four pack. What's it nice back in the day when they actually had odds printed on the pack and that's all you had to go after? Nowadays, they need like 16 pages of size 8 font print to list all the different things you can pull. It's pretty crazy. Definitely it makes it more interesting with all the stuff you can pull. But this was a simpler time back in 1995. And here we go. Let's take a look. Again, a 660 card set in full. And I believe the Series 2 set was a little bit smaller than Series 1. There's 200 and some cards. I can't remember exactly. 284 maybe. There's Alan Trammell's final ever Tops card. There's two players that have a final Tops card in 1995. Trammell's one, the other being Dave Winfield. So we have our Spectralite card right here. You can check those two out. They've got Cyberstats on the back. So what Cyberstats is basically is they took the 1994 season and they projected the stats of what the player would have put up if they had played an entire year. Interesting thing there. There are really no decent rookies in this. There are some prospect cards. There's Eddie Perez. He was always Greg Maddox's personal catcher. Then we have the On Deck series with prospects. Scott Hatterberg would go on to make some waves in the big leagues, most notably with the Moneyball A's. Look at that Ken Griffey Jr. That's a nice-looking card right there. Griffey Jr. was having a great year in 1994 before the strike, leading the American League in home runs there. Who knows? Maybe he would have hit 60. Matt Williams was the overall leader at the time of the stoppage. Here we have Johnny Damon's prospect card. And Troy Percival, who is an absolute flamethrower, lights out closer. His on-deck card right there. I don't think it's considered a rookie card. Here we go with this next one. Pack number two for Tim. We've got some Indians on-deck players. And then we have our Cyberstat cards. These boxes, they were kind of drying up. I paid, I think it was 60 for this, Nomar, Nomar Garcia Para, for a long time, early in his career, the first like six, seven years, we all thought Nomar was going to be a Hall of Famer. Nice draft pick card right there. Unfortunately, just didn't work out when it was all said and done for Nomar. And here's Andy Pettit and Ruben Rivera. Pettit, fantastic career, really great career. Ruben Rivera, not so much. It's Mike Piazza, that's a really great card there. Piazza, probably taken in spring training. Really cool picture. Ruben Rivera, by the way, is most notable now. When you hear the name Ruben Rivera, what do you think of? I think of him stealing Derek Jeter's stuff. So Ruben Rivera would sneak into the dugout. There's Dave Hollins grounding into a 6-4-3 double play. Rico Bronia right there as well. But Ruben Rivera would sneak into the Yankees dugout, I guess when the team was all out on the field. And he would steal Derek Jeter's stuff and sell it. 
Isn't that crazy? Rivera had some upside, so why even do that? And, and Derek Jeter was a, a prospect, a decent prospect at the time, but this stuff wasn't worth nowhere near what it is now. Craziness that he would do that. There's Bo Jackson near the end of his career hanging on with the Angels. He would go on and play with the White Sox for a little bit. Just could not really you know, continue on with that bad hip. Really kind of messed him up. Who knows what Bo Jackson would have become if he could have stayed healthy, but he tried to play football and also baseball at the same time, and it just did not work out for him. You had to imagine that football would get the better of him. A lot of prospect cards in this. We've got David Bell right there. He is the current manager of the Cincinnati Reds. There's Ron Gant, who was the 1995 Comeback player of the year after a big motorcycle accident. Didn't play at all in 1994 and came back in 95 and had a great team. I think he helped the Reds make the playoffs that year. More prospect cards. None of these are notable. Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer. Chipper Jones, that's a good picture with the sky in the background. Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer. We actually put a short up today of us pulling a Chipper Jones reverence patch auto. There's Conine the Barbarian and... Gary Sheffield, who's a member of the 500 Home Run Club. We've got Tom Gordon and Javi Lopez with the Gold Rookie Cup. The Gold Rookie Cup used to be a lot larger than it is now. I don't know if I have any Gold Rookie Cup cards handy that I could just grab and show you real quick, but this uh, this cup was a lot larger. That's like twice the size of what the cup is now on cards. I don't mind the larger logo. Not at all. We saw what they tried to do in the 2022 Top Series 1 when they made the rookie card logo minuscule, and I hated it, and everybody else did as well. And then they went back and fixed it in Series 2 and made it the normal size that we've had for the past few years. Craig Biggio, League Leader card. That's an insert card on the back. Pretty cool. I think those were, what, one in every four packs? We're looking for a finest card in here, which is one in every 20. Basically, it's about one per box. Also with 95, you might run into them sticking together every now and then. That last one did a little bit. There's Henry Rodriguez. And we've got Angel Martinez, Spall, Paul Spalljarek, Cade Gaspar, rookie card. I don't remember him whatsoever. Scott Klingenbeck and Mark Smith. Mark Smith, I think, would come over to the Pirates for a little bit. A lot of these guys just having cups of coffees and, and then disappearing. Ryan Thompson right there. Doug Jones. We've got Darren Dalton up there next. There's Albert Bell. He always looks so mad like he's just about ready to just pulverize something. Hopefully the baseball or Fernando Vina sometimes. Next pack up. Let's see what we have. By the way, we will be live tonight. It's Thursday night and we do auctions on Thursday. We'll be wrapping up the consignment of all those Shohei Otani, so I hope you can join us for that. Check out the Kirby Puckett. It's a good card. I like the backs of these 95 Tops cards. I think they're pretty sweet with the extra photo, and you get the action photo, too. A little tough to read the league leader text. It's super bold, almost that it's almost impossible to read. There's Kirk Gibson, who's a great player. Big Mac, Mark McGuire, who would go on just a couple years from 95 to hit 70 in a year, 1998. Jason Bray, my brother, used to really be into him for a little while. Steve Bedrosian. We have a bunch of on. Wow, look at all the on deck and prospect cards coming up here. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and flip these over. A little bit of a 1991 upper deck collation. There's a nice Mike Piazza Cyberstat card or Spectralite. And uh, I like that one. We'll get that one sleeved up for Tim. That's a good one there. We got a Brian Eversgird card right there. Bo Jackson once again. Mark Johnson not finding much. I looked over the rookie and on deck checklist. There's not too much in there. Doug Glanville had a decent career. And on to the next pack. So live tonight selling Otanis. Hope everyone's had a very pleasant Thursday. We just got back from our date night tonight. Sophia and I, we went out to. A, an escape room and it was a 60 minute escape room we were one puzzle away from getting out there's jeff bagwell spectralite that's a nice card we'll get that one sleeved up spent too long on one puzzle and just couldn't quite make it i actually was going to film a little video there but then they were really strict about having your phone out at all there's paul wilson maybe i'll put some of the footage at the very end 
of this video. Paul Wilson, draft pick card. He was part of those big three Mets prospects from back in the day, which was Paul Wilson and Bill Pulsifer and Jason Isringhausen. Isringhausen would go on to have the best career of those. There's Neon Dion, Dion another football crosser. We haven't really had any football two-way athletes in a long time. Dion Sanders, Bo Jackson, Brian Jordan we had. Back in the 90s, there's Don Mattingly. The 95 would be Don Mattingly's last season. So maybe he got a 96 tops card, but he would retire. The back injury would just hamper him. And, man, a great career there in the mid-80s. Just such a fantastic player. Unfortunately, he just didn't play long enough to be a Hall of Famer. Yvonne Rodriguez sure did. He was just probably the best defensive catcher that I've ever seen or even, like, Followed along. He would throw out more than half the runners that would run on him. He probably could have been quite a pitcher. It would have been interesting to see him out there. He probably could have thrown it up there around 100 miles an hour. His son would go on to become a pitcher, Derek Rodriguez. I think he uh, I think he flamed out. I don't think he's around anymore. There's Ricky Henderson, the last MLB player to steal 100 bags back in the 80s. I think he was the last one. Vince Coleman may have gotten there. Can't remember which one did it last. We've got Pat Mears. And we'll flip these over and see what else we have. There's Alan Trammell again. We've got the Cyberstats cards. Robin Ventura. John Burkett. Upside down for whatever reason. Pat Rapp. Those lean early Marlins days. Actually, the Marlins didn't do a bad job. If you think about it, the Marlins started off. Their existence started in 1993. They won a World Series Four years later? That's crazy. That's that's a crazy good turnaround. That first year with the Marlins, it was a little rough. You know, with the they got to draft players off of teams. Teams would be able to protect a bunch of players, but they couldn't protect everybody. So they got some some maybe like C tier level prospects and stuff. And then they were able to spend a little bit of money and put a team together. Then, of course, they blew it all up after they won. See if the Marlins can ever get back there again. It'd be nice for them. There's Denny Nagel, Carlos Baerga, who was a great player for a good bit in the 90s before just slowly fading away and losing his mojo. Carlos Delgado signing a clipboard or something, maybe a ticket. Delgado was a great player. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Jose Lean, that's a good picture. My brother would love this card. Jose Lean was my brother's favorite player when we were growing up. And I like this card because he's jumping over Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken making an appearance on that card. That's a good picture right there. Lean was always so athletic. He used to make it a, a deal or a, a regular thing where he would jump over Mike Lavalier. Mike Lavalier was the short in stature catcher for the Pirates in the late 80s early 90s, and Jose Lean could literally jump over Mike Lavalier. That's pretty crazy, his uh, his athletic ability. He was always such a good fielder. We're starting to see some doubles now. You see another Mark McGuire there. As we take a look at what else we've got, Ken Griffey Jr. again. We'll take that double or triple or quadruple all day. Hopefully they keep giving it to us. There's Roberto Kelly. Another Yvonne Rodriguez. We revisit these duplicates. Ken Griffey Jr. there. Johnny Damon once again. Troy Percival once again. Jay Payton, who would go on to make the big leagues. David Need was a really great prospect for the Atlanta Braves, but couldn't really put it together up in the rare air in Denver. I like that Bobby Boat card. That's a good picture of Bobby. He still gets paid. His day's coming up July 1st. It's just, what, two weeks away? You're going to hear all about it. If you follow baseball, you hear about Bobby Bonilla Day coming up very soon. Bobby Bonilla Day, the first of every July. He, I think he went and uh, deferred like 5 or $6 million because the Mets payroll was really pinched. I think they were involved with Bernie Madoff, and it kind of really messed their finances up. And they had to, they had to cut funds some way, save some money. They approached Bobby Bo and said, could, could we just defer this to down the road and – We'll pay you for 30 years at this rate or whatever, a million dollars a year. He said, yeah, now he's he's always one of the top paid Mets. You know, he's not like the top one of the top five, but he's always making over a million dollars. He's on the on the Mets payroll now. 
Bobby Bo. I loved watching him when he was with the Pirates. There's Andy Pettit on deck once again. Greg Vaughn, another Mike Piazza. That's the third Piazza. We got Jason Kendall prospect card there. Of course, it's not going to be his rookie. His rookie card is 19. 93. Mark Icorn, my brother and I hated this guy, and I don't know why. I feel like guys with facial hair, mustaches, beards, we just didn't like. Mark Icorn was ruthless, just ruthlessly mocked, and he was actually one of the slowest pitchers in all of baseball at the time. I think he could only throw the ball in the 70s. He kind of had a submarine motion, but it was effective with his uh, big frisbee slider. In fact, I'm quite sure that in 1995, I could throw a ball faster than Mark Eichhorn. I would, all, I would uh, pretty much bet money on it. But, uh, of course, wouldn't have been nearly the same results because he had all the, the movement and deception. Here we go with this next one. Hall of Famer Lee Smith is in there. Chris Hoyles. We've got maybe some new cards from this release that we haven't seen yet. Kirby Pocket Hall of Famer with the Spectralite. Might as well sleeve it. And we've got Desi Relaford, Eddie Diaz right there. Prospect cards. Chipper Jones once again. So there's another Nomar. We're seeing some repeats here. At the end of the escape room today, by the way, they gave us a little sign to hold up. Actually, we got to pick which sign we wanted. So I don't know how it happened, but when I looked at the picture, I picked a sign that said um, so close or something like that because we're one puzzle away. But for some reason, in the picture... It said, I did absolutely nothing when I held, and I was, uh, I looked at the picture, we were laying on the couch, I was like, what is this? I didn't, I didn't chick pick this one. And Sophia's like, they were double-sided, and you must have accidentally turned around and didn't realize it. Really embarrassing. I made myself look like a, just a pile of bricks dragging the, the team down. But here we have a finest card. This is a box hit. It's a Topps Finest Moise Salou. Really cool card right here. I like Topps Finest a lot. There's the back of it. That's pretty sweet right there. Moise Salou, who was becoming a star at the time. I was always mad at the Pirates for trading him away. Hey, look at the Larry Walker. Really nice fake catch, Larry. Just laying on the ground. <laughs> that is definitely a photo op right there. All right, Larry, put your leg up a little bit so it makes it look like you just dove. It's still a cool picture. In fact, I kind of want to go and recreate this picture right now. Larry Walker with the diving catch. That is a great picture. I, I feel like I want to sleeve that one up, even though it's only worth maybe a quarter or so. Got Ron Coomer right there. And Aaron Boone is there as well. Let's see what else we've got. Got Willie Banks. Omar Vizquel. And here is the cover boy of the box. Roberto Alomar showing off. Balancing a baseball on two fingers like it's hard. Come on, Robbie. Anybody can do that. Next one up for Tim. Sophia just sent me a text. She's going to come down here, but she doesn't want to interrupt the video, obviously. She just sent a text saying she's tired and going to bed. She's going to come down and help sort cards, but looks like I'll be sorting alone tonight. We, uh, I don't blame her. We, uh, we went uh, swimming all morning. So it's pretty fun. And uh, there's Marty Cordova, who had a very nice start to his career. Sophia learning to swim and has been doing a great job. She can swim in the deep end now and is treading water for a good bit. And I'll tell you what, after you tread water for a while, you just want to sleep. So I don't blame her. Here we go with this next one. We have Fred McGriff, the crime dog and Hall of Famer. And rightfully so. He deserves to be there. Took too long for him to get in. There's Kevin Brown. Not the good Kevin Brown. That's the bad Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown, the pitcher, is way better. I always thought this card was super cool. Paul O'Neill with the O'Neill bullseye posters in the outfield. That's a good-looking card right there. And Manny Ramirez also making an appearance, it looks like. We've got Joe Randa, who would go on to have a decent career and play with the Pirates. Jeff Cirillo would have a good career as well. There's Manny with the big rookie cup. Ramirez would have definitely been a Hall of Famer if not for the multiple PED issues with him. He was so good. Such a great, pure hitter. And all-around fun character. There's Will Clark. That was Will Clark on the pack. I was, I thought that looked like Will up there. That 
little guy right there. There he is. Will Clark making a break off of second base. And Steve Avery, one of the forgotten Braves aces. He was good. He always gets overlooked whenever you think of Braves starting pitchers. You always think of Maddox, Glavin, and Smoltz. No one ever really thinks too much about Steve Avery, but he was there too. They had some other decent pitchers, like uh, Ken Merker was in that rotation. Got Kevin Stalker right there. Carlos Garcia, who was the Pirates' 1994 All-Star representative. Jack McDowell right there, who went to Cy Young a couple years before that in 1993. All right, let's flip these around and see what we've got. Mike Lansing, Bruce Ruff, and there's Darren Dalton, who unfortunately would pass away. Steve Carsey. I remember that whenever I was in sixth grade, I'd be getting my lunch, and I was always greeted by a big life-size cutout of Darren Dalton, and I was always mad about it. I was like, why is freaking Darren Dalton here in our lunchroom? And it was like him promoting milk. I think it was milk. I think he had a milk mustache or something like that. It was like a life-size cutout. And I was mad because it wasn't a pirate. I was thinking, okay, this is, uh, this is pirate's country. Why don't we have one of the Buccos here? I guess maybe none of the Pirates were marketable enough. 1994, we didn't have very many great players on our team. we got Cal Ripken. Our first time seeing the Ripken, that's a good card right there. That's a great picture of Cal. He was definitely one of my favorites. He would always lead the league in games. Now, the, the times when you don't see him leading the league or tired from the league lead, that won 61 a few times. That's because of rainouts. Sometimes games would be rained out, and then they would not be made up if both teams were out of playoff contention. So he would always play all of his team's games, hence the consecutive game streak, which that record is going to be almost impossible to ever break. There's Larry Walker with a fake dive and catch again. Get that one sleeved up just because I like that card, and I want to go and, go out and lay down on a baseball field and recreate it. There's Danny Jackson, who had some good seasons earlier in his career in the late 80s, and Denny Nagel. Looks like he might be showing off the four seam there. We've got maybe, I don't know, seven packs left here in this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope everyone is having a great day and getting ready for the weekend. We are planning on, it's going to be a busy weekend around here. We're going to celebrate my dad's birthday this weekend. It's actually his birthday today so happy birthday to my dad just gave him a phone call a little bit ago and we'll be going out to dinner this weekend uh, i think safi and i are going to go whitewater rafting this weekend that's the plan we're getting our hot water heater installed tomorrow it's exciting times there's terrell strawberry S sorry folks water heater i was told don't call it hot water heater it's just water heaters i got corrected about that Mike Lieberthal right there. Nigel Wilson, who was a big name in 1993 with the uh, Marlins. Nigel Wilson never really became a star. We have one pack left in this next stack. Yeah, a lot of people just tuned out of baseball in 1995. The players came back. Baseball came back. I was so happy. But a lot of people took it personally. Like, these freaking millionaire babies crying about money they get paid millions of dollars to play a kid's game they should feel so lucky and a lot of people just were just kind of turned off by the whole thought of watching these millionaires play and it wasn't until later in 95 that Cal Ripken Jr. started to uh, bring people back with his uh, you know throughout the summer people were like wait a minute Cal Ripken's about ready to break Lou Gehrig's streak and Started to count the games out. When's he going to do it? September 5th or 6th? And when he did it, that started to bring fans back. And then the fans started to come back with Ripken. And then I would say Big Mac and Sammy Sosa did the rest and brought the rest of the fans back with the, uh, the epic home run chase of 98. That was, uh, that was something. I remember just looking at the box scores every morning in the paper to see if they did it and it was crazy how <laughs> they they always seemed to go deep there was no stopping them of course it was right in the midst of the roaring steroid era a little bit of help there 
but definitely an interesting time to be a baseball fan was the 90s with all the long balls. We got five packs left here in this 1995 solo jumbo pack video. We got another insert here. It's Mike Piazza, who was the 63rd round pick, I think. They don't even have a 63rd round anymore. I don't even know if they have 20 rounds anymore. It's Todd Van Poppel, a unfortunately failed prospect who would lead the league in walks in 1994. He just uh, might recall the uh, all the hype about him in the early 90s. Career ERA as of 1995, 574. You just never know. There's Jeff Nelson. He was just lights out as the setup man for Marion Rivera with that big frisbee slider. Derek Bell, everybody hates him still in Pittsburgh if you follow the Pirates around 2001 or so. Where he basically said, ah, I don't feel like playing for you guys. I'm going into operation shutdown. I'm just going to be on my boat and I'm not going to really, I'm not going to make any attempt to play for you unless you give me more money. He literally called it operation shutdown. And that pretty much ended his career. I don't think he played for anyone after that. There's Mike Piazza insert card. Brett Saberhagen was lights out there in the 80s. And Jay Payton once again. Four packs left in this one. Topps Chrome went on sale the other day. Hopefully everybody was able to grab a box if they wanted to. They were on sale for a little while, so... The big news, there's Tony Gwynn, is they have really jacked the prices up on Topps Chrome. It's like it was $200 for a hobby box after the tax was added in, and it was, I think, a little over $400 for a jumbo box. And the pre-sales were going pretty slow because of it. I did, uh, I did order a case of each, and then my case guy hit me up today. He's like, do you want 20 cases? There's Andy Pettit once again, and I've... It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Is it going to be even more? Because usually the pre-sale prices are the lowest. And then when they come out, they're usually 10 20 bucks higher. So I bought some more cases. So we'll have you covered for Topps Chrome when it comes out. I'm hoping that we're going to get some more info on that set about maybe short prints. I know that the short prints from Series 2 will be in there. I really want to see Paul Skeens put in that set. As a short print, we'll see if it happens. We have, oh, here we go. We're going to have another Finest card. It's going to be the Big Hurt. That's an awesome card right there. The Big Hurt Finest. So we do well with the Finest cards. They're one in every 20 packs. I was expecting one per box. We actually got not one, but two. Not too bad. Steve Bedrosian and Lou Frazier right there. Another prospect card. Miguel Cairo, I guess, would have the best career from those four. Jason Isringhausen, one of the big three. And there's that Larry Walker cards all over the place now with the fake diamond catch. And Daryl Strawberry in his giant stays. Daryl Strawberry, great talent right there. Just two packs left in this one. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. I always like doing these throwback Thursdays, picking up, picking up an old box of something and opening it up. It's always fun to do. And it's always a little extra special when it's a box that was during the heyday of my collecting, which would have been 1989 through probably like 1997, I would say. I really started to really tone it down in 1998. Got my first job at 98, and I was all about saving up for a car and college and all that stuff. There's Esteban Loaiza. I won't talk too much about him. I don't know if he's out of jail yet or not, but he got involved in some stuff some extracurricular activities. You can Google it if you want to learn more. And Dave Harris is the last one. So we are down to our final pack in this video. Let's check it out. Matt Walbeck leads it off. And Tim, thanks for taking the sponsorship on this one. If you guys would like to sponsor video and get all the cards in a video just like this, Join our Patreon. We sell all of our spots there. We've got team breaks on Tuesdays. We've got box wars on Saturdays. We have videos throughout the week with opportunities just like this. We've got Marquise Grissom there. And we've got Rob Nen, Jay Payton, Dave Need, the need for speed. There's Tommy Davis. Carlos Perez was a pretty decent and interesting prospect when he first came up. A lot of hype around him. He was very interesting to watch. 
And then we have the Chris Clemens as the final card there. So, Tim, thank you very much. Pretty cool release with those, you know, the inserts are kind of sparingly put in, and, but they're kind of nice. So before we go, maybe I'll give you some bonus footage here at the very end. I really wish they would have let us show you the escape room, but, well, what not Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, we just finished up a live stream last night around 12.30 a.m. We were live for three hours, breaking a bunch of Series 2 over there. So check us out on Wednesdays on Whatnot. Uh, and you get $15 for free as well if you've never signed up for Whatnot before. Um, you're gonna, it'll give you 15 bucks as long as you have that fresh email address and your information, your, get your shipping in, get your credit card information put in there, or PayPal information, and then you're good to go. But make sure you use this link when you sign up to get the $15. It's whatnot.com slash invite slash jabs family. And I've got a bunch of stuff in the description you can buy. Um, we got hanger boxes of series two. We got blaster boxes of series two. We've got mighty boxes of series two. And the $15 applies to all those marketplace listings as well uh, as anything else you would buy in one of the whatnot live streams. Works just like our YouTube auctions, except it's much quicker. We do the auctions at 15 seconds over there, and um, they go pretty much one after the next. So check us out on Wednesdays, and thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday night, and I will see all of you in the Shohei Otani consignment auction coming up here in just a little bit tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Once I said there's five, then time. If that one switch would have been turned on, could have had it. Have you seen these shows?